Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to share with you a lesson that I learned when I was on the GAPS diet. A lesson that I learned from Dr. Natasha that I will never forget. This is one of the most profound teachings that I think there is in the GAPS book. And this is a teaching that whether you're doing the GAPS diet or not, whether you, whatever you're doing in your life, whatever your healing process looks like right, right now, this teaching should always be at the forefront of your mind and it is a teaching that it honestly changes, it changes everything about healing when you understand this and when you, when you, when you have this. And I, I, I remember this, it echoes around the back of my mind and in uh, it echoes in in Dr. Natasha's uh, her, her like her like westernized Russian accent. I watched so many YouTube videos of Dr. Natasha, and it just it just echoes it just echoes in the back of my mind. And that is, the gut is either the number one source of nourishment, or it is the number one source of punishment for the body. And I'm going to break that down for you. But when you understand that, you will, you will truly understand why gut health comes first. You'll understand why Hippocrates, the father of Western medicine, said all disease begins in the gut. You will, you will, you will look at your gut in a completely different way. The the single biggest lesson that I learned from the from the GAPS diet from Dr. Natasha is your gut is the number one source of nourishment or is your number one source of punishment. This is the leaky gut phenomenon. This is, so looking at it clinically or scientifically, this is gastrointestinal hyperpermeability. What does it mean? So this is, think about this with me, okay? I'm gonna take you on a journey. And it's a bit of a funny way of looking at it, but this is, this is, this is the best way to see it. So your digestive system is actually a hollow tube outside of yourself, inside of yourself. Did I lose you? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. So your digestive system, while it's inside of you, you know, like you can like touch your belly, you know, you can feel like, oh, here's my stomach, here's my intestines, you know, it's inside of you. Actually, it's a hollow tube and everything that's in your gut, so everything you swallow, everything you eat, it actually is technically still outside of you, inside of you. So it's, it's this tube that is keeping everything that you eat in this specific space that's technically outside of you and that's one of its main jobs it wants to keep things in that place so that it can selectively sift and pick the things out that it wants it's like oh look potassium i want that oh look serotonin the neurotransmitter produced by my healthy gut flora oh i'll take that that's nice oh a methylate b vitamin wow we'll have one of those wow look at these amino acids this this tyrosine this, this glutamine, oh look, we'll take that, oh glutamine we can use to heal our gut. You know, your gut is designed to pick the things that it wants and bring them inside of your body. But at the same time, it's this wall, it's this barrier that keeps things out of your body. It's the first, it's the wall of your castle. And if you've read any of Dr. Natasha's books, you'll get that analogy. It's your castle wall. And it keeps a lot of things out of your body. It keeps all of your gut flora, like even though your, your gut flora, all of your bacteria, they're all in your gut, they're actually kind of technically outside of you because your gut is, again, it's inside of you, but it's outside of you. It's this wall that keeps everything that's in, in your gut out, outside of you. And the thing about this, this, this gut lining is it's one cell thick. So literally you've got everything that's in your gut. So all the food that you eat, all of the bacteria, the yeast, the viruses, the protozoa, all of your healthy, all of your unhealthy flora, all of it, there's one cell, you know, like imagine like you, f you scratch like one skin cell comes off. They're, they're tiny. There's one cell that separates what's in your gut from what is in your body and what's in your bloodstream. One cell, one cell thick. And that, that one cell thick lining is the most important thing that you need to understand. Like this is, this is the, the power of this teaching. If your gut is working for you, you are getting all of these nutrients, you're digesting all of your food, you're absorbing all of these things. Your gut plays probably, I would say, the biggest role in detoxification in your whole body. 
I actually think your liver does more, but that that is a prerequisite that your gut is working. If your gut doesn't work, your liver cannot work either. Your liver cannot detox if your gut doesn't work. All the toxins that your body tries to remove through your liver, they go out through your stool. So if your gut is not working, your liver isn't working either. And your liver is just running on a treadmill, trying to do less work and it can't do it. So your gut is the single most important detoxification organ. It's the single most important for, for nourishing you. You know, Every other function of your body costs calories, micronutrients, proteins. It requires resources. And if your gut does not work properly, you cannot have resources. Your body doesn't work. Your immune system, your hormones, your detox, your brain, you know, your brain is actually what is going to figure out how you move out of having a health problem, you know, because your brain is what makes you decide, do I go and see this specialist? Do I work with this person? Do I do this lab testing? How do I make the money to afford all this? Like your brain does all of this and your brain cannot work if it doesn't have serotonin coming from your gut to make you feel enthusiastic and motivated and happy. It doesn't work if like your, your liver can't detox if it doesn't have B-complex vitamins. Like your gut, it affects every single thing in your body, for better or for worse. So if it's working, fantastic. If it, if it's working for you, and I, I want to paint this picture for you because I want you to genuinely, truly understand, healing can be really easy and can be really simple. If your gut is working, like like like, let's let's not say flawlessly because I mean, who we don't live in utopia, right? We live in the real world. So let's say your gut is working really well. You can be exposed to toxins on a daily basis. You can be eating not the per most perfect diet. You can, you can be living in this in the modern world, and your body is passively detoxifying. It's doing these things automatically because that's its natural state of being. Like your body is naturally healing. That's its natural state. And you can literally be doing like no crazy detox stuff. You don't have to be doing like like the hard work, you know coffee enemas, castor oil packs, taking like handfuls of supplements. Like you don't have to be doing all these things. You can literally just be being alive, just living a normal life and your body is just detoxing and it's just doing it passively. And that's the power of your gut working for you because if it's working properly, it will do all of these things automatically. I can remember reading in the Gaps book, Dr. Natasha was talking about a child that was struggling with heavy metal toxicity. And the parents were like, I want to do chelation. I want to do these like really intense, really extreme detoxification protocols. And I can remember Dr. Natasha saying like, no, no, I mean, she says it. I can't say it, but she says it in this, in her like funny, like Western Russian accent. I, I love it. It's so close to my heart, but I hear it in my brain like that. I'm sure you probably do as well. And she's saying the gut is the number one source of punishment or nourishment. Like if we fix the gut, everything else will fall into place. And she did this, like fix the gut with the kid. And then like autism starts reversing and the gut starts working again. And they tested heavy metals and they're like really low. They didn't do anything, any crazy treatments, any supplement. They just fix the gut because the body knows how to do this stuff. You know, it knows how to fix itself. It's when the systems that let it do these things become dysfunctional, that's when you have disease. So when your gut is not working for you, why is it so bad? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this down for you so you can see. When your gut isn't working for you, first of all, you're not getting all of those benefits of it working for you. You're not getting nourished. It's hard to digest, break down, absorb your food. You're not getting all of your B vitamins. You're not getting all of your minerals. You're not getting all of the, all of the things that you need to get in your diet for your body to actually work. You're not getting that serotonin. You've got gut dysbiosis, you know? All of these organisms, like your, your friendly lactobacillus and bifidobacterium and these other ones that produce your serotonin, they're not there. Instead, you've got candida, or you've got uh, H. pylori, or you've got, um, what's another common one? You've got a sulfur dysbiosis, or you've got SIBO. You know, you're not getting any of these neurotransmitters that you need to actually think clearly and to be happy and to enjoy your life. You're not getting those, so you just lose them. And instead, you get the things that these organisms produce instead. You're getting the acetaldehyde. You're getting the um, you're getting the delactate that causes muscle soreness and chronic fatigue syndrome. You're getting um, oxalate, and then you've got a huge oxalate burden coming from your gut, and you've got oxalate sensitivity. You've you've got um, these bacterial fragments like endotoxin and lipopolysaccharide being produced, and instead of your gut being this like primary detoxification. Um, organ 
it's now actually become the biggest source of toxicity. And I, I, I mean, like, you can forget the mole, you can forget the amalgam fillings, you can forget the environmental toxicity. Like, these are all important, you know. In, environmental toxin burden, you need to reduce it as much as you can. But I've seen people that completely get away from it. They, they remove their amalgams, clear up their house, completely change the environment. They still have the same problems. And it's because the gut is actually now the, their biggest source of punishment. It's producing all of these different um, compounds that are toxic. It's inhibiting their nutrient absorption. The seat of their immune system is in the gut. You know, all of these friendly bacteria and these. So you've got payers patches. You've got you've got different types of immune cells in your gut. They can't work. They don't. They don't work because the gut isn't working. And all of these other systems that are connected now start to fail. You know, your bile isn't flowing properly. You can't remove toxins. You you can't remove all of your processed hormones. So you're getting like hormone imbalances. You, your body can't metabolize all of the stress hormones, so you're getting like cortisol imbalances. You're stressed all the time. Thyroid isn't working properly. Um, when you've got these organisms in the gut and they're producing these things, or you're eating food that isn't breaking down properly and it's leaking into the gut, leaking through this 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 one cell thick lining that's supposed to keep everything in the gut, it's leaking through. Now you've got autoimmunity. You've got Hashimoto's. You've got like a autoimmune like knee or or disc degeneration. You've got uh, eczema or psoriasis. For me, I had it literally felt like I had like glass in my joints, and I could connect this directly to how permeable my gut was. The more leaky my gut was, the more glass it felt like I had in my wrists. And I can remember trying to—I was trying to do the dishes, you know—and I was trying to do this in one of the glasses in a cup, and it was just like, what is going on? There obviously isn't glass in my wrist. How do I have so much pain here? And it was an autoimmune reaction coming from my gut. I can remember getting really bad flare-ups of Sjogren's syndrome, which is like a uh, where the body is attacking the mucus-producing membranes in your body. So my eyes would get like so dry, and I'd get these headaches, and it really caused bad constipation as well. Directly correlated to how permeable my gut was, and it was an autoimmune reaction. And when this is happening, you know, you think about autoimmunity. It's bad enough that your body is attacking itself and it's damaging your body. You know, that's bad. But then you have to look at this as well. Your immune system is so expensive. You're one of the first systems that turns off if your body doesn't have enough resources is your immune system because it's so expensive. Think about, like, the amount of resources it, that it takes to fuel uh, a fever, like a two-hour fever. We're talking, like, thousands of, thousands of calories. We're talking all these nutrients that feed the immune system. You know, your body will burn through like what you would normally need to survive on a daily basis. You you could burn through a hundred like in a single in a single two two hour period. You know, it's crazy the amount of resources that your body uses in your immune system. And not only does it use resources, but now your body is using all of these resources to destroy itself, to attack itself, which then means it has to repair itself afterwards as well. So it's like your body is just it's pulling this way and it's pulling this way and it's burning through all of your resources and it's getting nowhere. It's actually just staying completely still. It's not healing, it's just completely stuck and it's depleting itself. And that's why it's so bad if your gut isn't working for you. When it doesn't when it doesn't work for you, it isn't just it's not bad enough that it's not working for you. It is severely hindering your progress. It is if your gut is not working for you, you are climbing Mount Everest. You know, this is the biggest mountain of a, of a health challenge, of a health journey you will ever go on. Whereas, if you can actually move to a place where your gut is working for you, instead of it being this, like, like arctic trek up a, up a mountain, it will be this, like, like, gentle stroll on the beach. You know, it's peaceful, it's relaxing, it's easy. You don't even have to try that hard. Because your gut's doing all of the heavy lifting. Your gut's doing all of the hard work. So you, before you try to do like detox, before you're trying to fix your hormones, before you're trying to do, honestly, before you're trying to do anything, work on your gut. There's always, I always find people have, so you've got two categories. You've got low hanging fruit. You've got a couple of like, a supplement or a lifestyle change or just changing your eating in some way like a very very low effort thing that just requires an insight and a change and you can see symptom improvement immediately i've had i've had clients not not trying to brag okay i'm not trying to brag and i'm not saying this will happen for you 
but I have had I've had I've had clients that make two or three like specific changes based on the symptomology and the and the needs, and their symptoms improve by like sixty to eighty percent in three days. And I'm not I'm not saying that's going to happen to you, okay? But I'm saying it has happened. I have seen it, and it could happen to you. But I'm not saying it will. But it could. You know, when you understand where the dysfunction is coming from, and you you make a change. If, you, if it's one of these low-hanging fruit things, your life can change very, very fast. Then you've got more of these long-term things. You know, I've been, my gut health has improved like, it must be like a, like like 20,000%, you know? I went from being only, only able to eat just five foods, like that was it, just five foods for about five years, to almost without exception like almost anything i can it doesn't give me like gut problems anymore i still struggle a little bit with like some fibrous materials sometimes but i mean as i said like this is a journey you know and for me right now it's not like i'm climbing up this mountain like oh if only i could eat the fiber i'm like strolling i literally am strolling i went on the beach this morning i'm literally strolling along the beach after having this amazing breakfast that i that i ate out at a restaurant and it was and i'm just digesting it and it's like easy and i'm literally just relaxed and i know that those next stages of healing will are coming like i know they're coming i don't have to work that hard to get them because i've already set things up so there's low-hanging fruit that can immediate like your life will change in, in days and then you've got this like more working towards goals but these working towards things you can do it one or two ways you can either do it the easy way where you get your gut to work for you and it is improving all of these functions it's supporting your brain health it's supporting your your liver's ability to detoxify it's supporting your hormonal health it's supporting your immune system and that way it's like you're coasting along you're just you're just walking along the beach and enjoying enjoying the journey or it can be this absolutely hellish nightmare where you're trying to climb mount everest and you're exhausted and you're depleted and your gut is actually like fighting you like your gut is is like using the mountain analogy you're trying to climb up and you've got this like gremlin like stuck on your back and he's like trying to pull you down the mountain and make you fall you know, if you can get your gut on your side, it I, I, it changes everything. Like the whole thing becomes so much easier. So I really, I really encourage you. I, I would say I even implore you. You know, looking back at my healing journey, like if you can just get your gut working for you instead of against you, it will change your whole life. It will change how you're doing this. It makes it easier, and it sets you on the right track for all of these other systems to improve as well. Detoxing is easier if your gut works for you. Improving cognition and and mental health is so much easier if your gut is working for you. It's honestly for the like the effort to the reward this is the best investment in the whole in your whole healing process is it's your gut. And the place I I saw this, I glimpsed this for the first time, was Dr. Natasha in her GAPS diet. You know, GAPS diet, it's all about the gut. And I don't, I, I love, I mean, I think Dr. Natasha's a little bit cheeky, actually. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit angry, I'm a little bit outraged about Dr. Natasha, because here's what she did. You tell me what you think. She took the most physiologically appropriate diet for the human race, the diet that we have been eating for like, millennia, and she branded it the GAPS diet. Like, you ask me, that's a bit cheeky. It's a little bit cheeky. But good for her. I mean, no one else had done it up until then, so good for her. But it's kind of cheeky. I think this is like the fundamentals. And you can build on this, you know? You can add you can add your grains back in. Like, I do way better with grains now. I, 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 feel, I feel lost without a bit of rice here and there. I love bread. I mean, who doesn't love bread? Who doesn't love bread? And the thing is, if you can eat bread, and, you're, and it's not hurting you, and it's not destroying your gut, and it's not making your gut work against you, it's actually working for you, you can eat bread. Like, it's fine. There's no problem there. But your gut has to be working for you first, otherwise it's going to be a problem. So I'm eternally grateful to Dr. Natasha for, for this insight, and I, I hold this at the foundation of my healing process, and at the and at the foundation of, of, of basically how I see the world, you know? Like, when you look at someone having a bad day, you're like, what's going on in their gut? You know, you think about someone having a, a reaction after they had some food, like, hmm, I wonder what's happening in their gut. You know, you see someone that's like, in love with their life, and they're having a great time, and they can eat whatever they want, and you think, that's their gut. Their gut's working for them. 
so I'm really grateful to Natasha for that um, it's something that I will I hold and again I hold it very dearly in, in my heart with her cute little little westernized Russian Russian accent I love it it's so, it's so cute it's so motherly you know, I really needed her at that time but that's a lesson that, I, that I've taken and I would say if you're smart and you're in a healing process take that lesson on board too because when you prioritize that it changes absolutely everything Miranda says, is it safe when you have candida and SIBO and Klebsiella? It's a good question. It really depends on the individual. So the way that you know is, how does it make you feel? Um, your body is intelligent. It's, it's relaying what is working for you and what is not working for you every second of every day with your symptoms, with your thoughts, with the way you feel. So I would say it depends. You know, There's no way to, I, can, I can tell you without, without knowing more. But when it comes to any food and asking if any food is good for you, it really, the, the, the question is, is it helping you or is it hurting you? And the way that you'll know that is how it makes you feel. So symptom wise, but also emotionally, also how it, how it affects other, other aspects of your life. So I can't, I can't, I can't, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't give you just a, yeah, it's great. Like if you have candida, bread is great. I can't say that. All I can say is you have to see how it makes you feel and often if it makes you feel bad it doesn't always mean you have to remove it it just means that there's some kind of dysfunction going on in the gut somewhere and maybe with a bit of support maybe changing like i've had clients that can't tolerate grains but then when we use food combining and they're eating grains apart from me they have no problem you know so it really depends everybody's unique um so i can't i can't just give you a one size fits all formula i would say it depends how you feel and if you feel great, then, I mean, who am I to argue with your body? Your, your body is smarter than me. If you don't feel great, then we probably need to do a little bit of investigation. We probably need to figure out why it's having those reactions and what they mean and where it's an indicator of dysfunction. And, and then targeting supplements, dietary, lifestyle changes at where that dysfunction actually is. So I hope that answers your question. So that's everything for today. Um, your gut is so important fix your gut lining it is the single most value for money investment in your whole healing journey I, I absolutely guarantee it your gut lining is the secret if you fix your gut lining your whole life just changes your healing process goes from climbing mount everest a living nightmare just like going from day to day just when is it going to end when are things going to change to this peaceful stroll on the beach you're not even really worried about it you just kind of, it's just easy, it's just laid back, it's simple, it's soft. That's what I want healing to be for everybody. That's what I've found healing to be for me. And I hope that this insight gets you there. Uh, I really hope it helps. So take care. If you have any questions, please do let me know. I'll make sure that I answer them. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.